Now, there are many reasons why you may want to connect a WooCommerce to your Google Sheets to transfer data between the two. For this example, we're going to say when someone actually places an order, we want that information or at least some of it to go over into Google Sheets, and then we can use that for various other purposes. So we're going to need a couple of tools to do this. First of all, we're going to need a website with WooCommerce installed and set up. Check, already got that. The next thing, we're going to need to use Uncanny Automator. Now, you are going to need to use the pro version of this. The free version doesn't give you access to this feature. So just bear that in mind. So now we know what we're going to be using. Let's take a look at how we set things up. First of all, let's hop over into my Google Drive and I've created a standard Google Sheet. And inside there, I've got five different fields and I've created one sheet called Orders. So now we've got that side of things set up. Let's hop over into WordPress. Now I've already installed Uncanny Automator, the free plugin and the pro version. I've put my credentials in and I've connected everything up. You're going to need to do the same thing. Sit very, very simple. So now we've got those two plugins installed. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and set up the automation. So to do that, we're going to come over to the automator section and in there, we're going to come down to add new. The first thing you're going to see is who are we actually targeting with this particular automation? For this, we want everybody. I will click on confirm. So for this now, we've got two different parts. The first thing we need to do is set a trigger. And the second thing we need to do is set an action. Let's give this a name first of all. So the first thing to do is set the trigger. The trigger is what do we want to happen to actually cause the action to take effect? So for this example, we want to be using WooCommerce. Then we've got a range of different options for what the trigger is going to be. For this example, we're going to be using the guest completes pays for lands on a thank you page for an order with a product. So let's select that from there. We'll give that a second or so, and then it says, right, okay, what's the trigger condition? We told you what we wanted to do. So you can see we've got pays for, but we can choose from three different options. For this, you can see we've got the option pays for, or we've got the option to complete. Now this is the sort of thing you want to take note of. Pays for means that if someone pays for this and the order doesn't get completed, they will still be added to that Google Sheet. In this example, we only want people that have actually paid for and the order has been completed, shipped, and everything else is done. It's up to you which way you want to work with this. We're going to choose completes and I'll show you the difference later. So once you can see it, that'll say completes, we can click on save. And now we've got the option to say, well, what product or products do we want to target? If we open this up, you can see we can choose any of our individual products. But for this example, we want any products. So we're going to choose any product from that list and click on save. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing we're going to do is set the action. This is what's going to happen when that trigger is set off. So let's go ahead and add an action. Now, this is where we can choose what we want to integrate it with. Now, you can see we want Google Sheets, and currently we're not connected to that. So let me show you how you connect things up. We'll choose Google Sheets as an option. Now, we're going to go ahead and connect our account. So let's click on the option to connect. That will open up a new tab or new page. So what we're going to need to do to confirm that we're happy with this and connect everything up is click on Sign In with Google. That's going to show us our account login. So we're going to choose the account we want to log in with. Then it's going to ask us to give permission for various different things for Uncanny Automator to be able to have control of. So you can see the first couple are pre-selected. However, the final two are not optional. We have to choose them. So let's just check those two options. Providing you're happy with this, we're going to click on Continue. And that will then take us back over into Uncanny Automator, and the connection is now being completed. So you can see we can choose between create a row in a Google Sheet or update a row. Now we only want this to happen when a new order is placed. So we want a new row in our Google Sheet. So we're going to choose that option that will then go ahead using the connection we just set up, connect up and show us what spreadsheets we have available. Currently, I've only got that one, which I've just shown you. And we can then select a worksheet. So for this example, we've only got one which is called orders. So we'll select that from our list. And then you can see we've got this columns. What we need to do is click on get columns and that's going to go ahead, look at our spreadsheet that we've created in Google Sheets, find out what column names are in there, and then we can map them to the information from WooCommerce. So you can see there's our five different columns. Now we need to go ahead and map everything out. To do that, I'll show you the first one and then you can kind of just repeat the process with the relevant data for the other four or however many you've got in your setup. So we're going to click on this little star icon that will then open up a drop down. We want to use our trigger as the data source. So we're going to choose that from there. And then underneath, you can see all of the data sources we have for an order. 
are going to be listed. So right the way through to your billing information, your shipping information, the order ID, and so on and so forth. So for this, we want the first name. So I'm going to be using the billing details because generally that's what we're going to want for the actual first name and surname. So I'm going to say billing first name. I'll select that from there, and that now fills that out. So I'm going to repeat the exact same process for these other four fields very quickly so you don't have to watch me doing it. Okay, so I've gone ahead now and I've pre-filled everything else out. We need to go ahead, click on save, and that's the setup complete. There's one other thing we need to do before this will actually start working. If you look at the right-hand side, you can see this is currently in draft status. So let's go ahead and activate this. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and test it out. Now, bearing in mind, this is set up for a guest. So we need to be a guest making an order, not a logged in user. So you can use this same process to create multiple triggers to do various different things. So just bear that in mind. You can create more than one automation. So let's go ahead, open up an incognito window, place an order and see what happens. So heading over to the store, I've already added a product to the cart. I'm on the cart page. You can see that I'm going to go ahead, proceed to the checkout. So now I'm going to click on place an order and there's my order completed. Now let's go back and take a look at what's going on with our spreadsheet. You'll see there's no entry inside you. Why is that? Because we set this to be only populated when an order is completed. Now at the moment, this isn't complete. If we take a look at our order, you can see this is currently set to processing. So once we go ahead and say this order is now completed, our order is now complete. So now that trigger will go ahead and fire, and then the action will take place. You can see there's the details transferred over. That's how simple and straightforward it is to use Uncanny Automator. And this is a really simple setup, but you can create as many of these as you want to use in any kind of circumstance. So after testing that out, we want to make sure that everything is working correctly. If we jump over into the All Recipes section back in Uncanny Automator, we can get an overview of any or all of the recipes we've created, including whether they're currently active or in draft, but also the number of times they've completed. In our example, we've got one time. But as this grows and gets more use, you'll see this will trigger more and more often. Hopefully you found this useful. All the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, Take care.